Hey, welcome everybody. Happy Friday. Hope everybody's having a great week. We are. Um, okay, so this week's newsletter. Now, last week I did uh, uh, did my first lesson with little Eric. Um, and I, what I'm going to do is maybe every other week do a lesson with him and, and, and him and Sophia. But this week, I want to do something on that was talked about, was touched on, on the last LTS. Somebody had asked a question about how do I make my patterns for big signs? How do I go about that? Well, um, and then that kind of led to three or four or five or more other people asking me the same thing, that they would love to see that. So that's what this video is going to be all about. Um, next week, we'll be doing the... Um, the lesson with Eric uh, and or Sophia. So what this is, I, first thing I want to go over with you guys is something that was passed on to me that is really, really cool if you don't have another way to do it. This is um, a free um, software and I'm not sure, I think it's posterior, I don't know. What does that say, Dad? Posteriza? Posteriza. 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 Yeah, anyway, you guys can search for this, find it online. But let me show you what it does. Let, let me zoom in on that so they be able to see it. Okay. We just found it online. We downloaded it. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and now, it, now it's, okay. it's visual so they can see it. Okay. So we downloaded it, um, and it's free. And here's what it does. This will give you an example of what it does. In the past... When I've taken a picture and I had to blow it up and it was bigger than eight and a half by 11, I had to figure out percentages and, and use my copier and you know two or three hundred percent whatever it's going to be and figure out and then move my picture on my copier and then put them all together. What this uh, software does is so cool and thank you and I apologize because I can't remember who it was but I've had I've been sitting on this now for a few weeks um, but anyway just to give you an example this is just a silly little picture that we printed out that we found it was an image that we found we want and, and what we did was with this software you can import a picture or an image like this and tell it that you want it to be whatever size you want you can stretch it you can pull it you can make it whatever size you want then it breaks it down if you'll go down to the table here dad it will break it down and print all your pieces out oh shoot let me see here print all your pieces out in uh gosh what have i done in eight and a half by eleven sheets and then all you got to do is just stick them together gosh is that right yeah yeah that that's right so it's really cool, guys. It's a great little uh, software package. So you don't have to figure out anything. You just take the picture, put it in, tell it what size you want it, and then it'll print out. And boom, it. It'll it, print out the necessary pieces if it was four pieces, six pieces, or eight pieces even. Right. Yeah, exactly. If okay. you wanted it taller than this or wider than this, it will take your image and it will print it out. Uh, really cool. Saves tons of time, guys. So that is, uh, that's my kind of first tip. So um, get that software. If you guys do much stuff like this, and again, it could be a, uh, it could be a butterfly, it could be whatever image that you have. You can import it right into this software, tell it what size you want, and it'll print it out in eight and a half by 11 sheets, then you just have to put them together. Could be a horse, could, could be yeah, a flower. Could be whatever, yeah, could be whatever. A, a special logo uh, that a customer has. Uh, anyway, that's my first tip. So now, if you bring the camera back up here, Dad, then I'm going to talk about. So, that is one way to go if you have the image. Now, if you don't have the image, that this is where, and, and there's probably a lot better way to do this than what I'm going to show you guys. I'm just going to show you what we do. This is what I've been doing for years and years and years. I have a customer, and I'm going to make this sign, and... Uh, you guys will probably watch me make this sign. But I have a customer that wanted uh, the shape like this. The ribbon shape is for a gift shop. But they wanted it a foot tall and four foot long. So you guys will recognize this as one of our cutout patterns. This is a, you know, 5 by 23 cutout pattern. So I had to try and figure out the proportions and make this into a four foot board and cut it out of a piece of pine is what I'm going to carve the sign out of. So, here's the way I go about it. Dad picked up this stuff 
uh, years ago somewhere, and you can see it's been kicking around for a long time. Basically, this is a big version of graph paper. These are one-inch squares, okay? And you can see the things got wet. It's all, it's all jacked up. But, but it still works. But it still works, absolutely. It still works. So this is basically, I don't, I, honestly, I don't, it doesn't have any identification on it. Um, I would just maybe do a search for big graph paper, one inch square graph paper. You probably find it somewhere. But anyway, so what I do is I will take a piece of this graph paper and I'll show you what I've done. Let's set that aside. So what I did is being as this graph paper is not four foot long, it, I, I can only get a two foot piece out of it. I basically took some measurements and kind of roughed it out. You can see it's not exact. I've erased many times, and, and if you can go down to the, I'm going to put it on the table. Yep. You see that, all right? And you see I've kind of erased it, and this gives me a rough idea. So this is about 11 inches, and it's a, somewhere around 20, 23 inches long, which is going to, yeah, 23 inches long, and I can adjust that as I go. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this, cut it out, and then I'm going to flop it and put it on a piece of half inch MDF and make my, make my pattern. So, um, what I'm going to do, so that's, that's So you're going to make a cutout pattern that you'll then use to cut out the, the sign board itself. That's okay. exactly right. That's exactly right. I'm just going to slice this off right now just so I can use this other piece of paper. Now, if I, most of the time I don't have a pattern that is that big. Let's say, uh, for instance, that somebody wants, uh, they want an oval and they want it to be, let's say they want an oval, say 10 inches by uh, 24 inches long. What I would do is I would take this graph paper, I would fold it in half, Hold it on the line. And I'm, I'm kind of hurrying through this, guys. I'm going to fold it in quarters. Okay? And you guys, you know, this is not real, real tough brain surgery. But let's say, okay, so they want it, uh, what did I say, 10 inches. So they want it 5 inches. So I've got to go twice that, which is about 5 inches, somewhere around there. And again, I'm just roughing this out, guys, by about 12 inches, because that's, and let's say, okay, so that's my starting point. So now all I'm going to do, and I'm, I'm doing this kind of on the fly. So if you have a shape that is, is the same on all four quarters, let's say, now all I would do is I would just cut that out. I'm, geez, I'm just really winging it here. I probably would take a little bit more time to do this, guys, but... Probably use scissors, too. And you can use scissors. Fortunately, I've got a real sharp knife here. But there, now that's... I don't know that... I think that that is more like a football. It's not really an oval. But you get the idea of what I'm doing. I probably should have made that more of an arch, but for time's sake, I just wanted to show you guys. So if you have a, a, a shape... And whatever shape it is, if, you, um, if you're going to do it the old-fashioned way, you could do it like this. And, and all four quarters were the same. And again, if it was, if it was just, um, uh, if it was not the same on the top and the bottom, but it was the same the other way, then you would do it this way and then just open it up. Am I making sense, Dad, yeah. or am I yeah. kind of rambling there? So anyway, that kind of gives you an idea. And then from there, I can do two different... Two, two ways. I can put this on my half inch. Let's say this was the piece that I was going to cut my pattern on. I would just uh, maybe put little pieces of tape, spray that, and then I'll take that. And um, the next step after what we finish right here is we'll go out to the bandsaw. And I'm going uh, to cut this out on uh, off camera. I'm going to cut this shape out, and I'm going to put it on my piece of four foot... Uh, or a little bit longer than four foot uh, MDF, and then uh, make the line on there. I can do it with carbon paper, or I can just take this down and, and spray it real quick with black, take the paper off, and it gives me a line to go by. And then I'll just rough it out with, uh, 
with a bandsaw and then uh, sand it down and uh, that gives me my basic pattern. So, um, what I do with my tape measure? so it's going to end up being, being as I have to cut it out of a 1x12 guys, I wanted it a little bit less than 11 inches tall. And then it's going to be, you know, somewhere around 46. I can extend this out and y'all show that on film. But um, anyway, so that's that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll shut the camera off and uh, then I will cut this out uh, with scissors probably that rather than my knife. Probably cut it out with scissors and we'll get it on a piece of uh, MDF and then we'll take it to the bandsaw and we'll get it cut out and uh, show you how we do the whole process. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get this thing laid out on uh, my piece of half inch MDF, which is going to be my cutout pattern. So dad, if you would pan down, you guys can see I've cut out my, my shape. And just so you guys know, this isn't exact. It's, it's a rough cut of what I want. When I get this transferred onto this board, the image, uh, when we, uh, on our next step after this, we'll go out to the bandsaw and uh, then I'll, you know, after I get it roughed out, then I'll sand it down to uh, where I want it to be. Okay, so, what, now what I've done here, let me get my tape. This is, uh, I, I want it to be a full 48 long and this is only 23 and a half. So, what I'm going to do, you can see I've drawn a... Uh, a center line here. This this board is actually 49. I've drawn a center line here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a uh, make a mark a half inch on each side, half inch in, because I need to make this thing a half inch bigger on each side, which will give me uh, a full one inch both ways. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a square line here. And I will just, now normally this is not something I would need to do because I would have enough room. But now what I'll do is I will just line that up with that, get it in the right spot. And I know that this thing is square and it's not, it's not tilted, you know, because if I didn't have that line, it could be out of square. So what I'll do is it's I'll... Called skewed. Skewed, yes. As K E W, skewed. As opposed to. Um, it, never mind. Okay, never mind. So <laughs> you can see, I want I want to make sure that when I flip this thing over, I'm going to spray one side. Then when I flip it over, I want it to be in the same spot. So that I'm just going to, you know, freehand that line in there. Okay. You'll see how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to work here rather than work and talk. I can do, maybe I can get away with doing both at the same time. So all I'm going to do is just tape this thing down in spots, guys. I have nothing super uh, complicated with this. I know I'm kind of moving around the board there, Dad. It's all right. I'm following. Okay. So I don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect. All I want to do is give myself enough room around the edges that... Uh, that it, it's, I'm going to be able to see what I need to cut. All right, so there's that. Now, I have an extra piece of paper over here. I'm just going to kind of already shook that up earlier. Again, you know, you guys know me. Now you cut that pattern, just uh, you cut that out with scissors, right? Uh, well, my scissors and and knife and my little uh, my little razor knife, the one that I was cutting the paper with uh, earlier. But yeah, I can, you can do it with scissors or or if you've got a real sharp razor knife, uh, you know, I like these little razor knives. They cut real well too. So either way, either way, so that should give me plenty of. Plenty good enough mark, and you got to make sure when you pull this up that you don't uh, don't rip your paper. Again, this is one of those deals where it just so happens that um, 
that I had to do it this way. Normally, if your paper is long enough. So now the other half, you just had that paper reversed. You just sort of have it upside down for what it was. Exactly. So just be, end for end, so right. to speak. Not necessarily upside down, but end for end for sure. Okay. Now we're just going to do exactly the same thing on this end. So we're going to square it up so we know that 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 is square to square. Tape it down, spray it, and that will give us uh, that will give us our line to go by that we can then take it out to the to the um, bandsaw. Which that's my least favorite part of the whole process is the bandsaw. Not something I'm really comfortable with. I can use it. But it's uh, maybe you could talk your dad into doing it. I would love to be able to talk my dad into doing it. Uh, yeah. Since he has a pretty steady hand with a bandsaw, he's uh, he was a machinist for thirty years. And... Yeah, that sounds like a really really good plan. You can see here. It it's probably ain't gonna happen, but it was just a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can always dream. I can always wish. Now, for you folks, you viewers who have scroll saws, uh, you really don't need to, to worry about your scroll saw to do this job and just, uh, in the New York Minute, it's just a matter of laying it out and cutting it out. Yeah, and that's, again, scroll saw is not my strong, my the scroll saw or the band saw, not necessarily my strong point, but... Um, it's not like this. Well, you do a job with a router, though. Yeah, John. I make up for it with a router. <laughs> and that should give me... Clear that nozzle. That should give me my image that I want. And then that, from that point... Ah, see, there's where... Tag him it. Trying to hurry and tearing my paper pattern, but I probably don't need it now. Hopefully, if I don't... If somebody doesn't mess it up on the scroll saw, the van saw. Alright, so, now, I'll just fake that. There's my line there, there's my line there. Okay, there. well, do you want to hold that up now and I'll, yeah. I'll pan to both ends of it and they can see this is going to be a one of our L, what we call our L boards or letter boards. Yep. And, uh, or nowadays it, we just it, call it a ribbon. We board. call it a ribbon board. Yeah. But, but now if I, if my calculations are right, that should be just about 48, within about an uh, eighth of an inch or so. And it is j about ten and a half high, I think. Yeah, about ten and a half high. Because see, I'm cutting it out of a one by twelve, which is that select pine is right at 11, 11 and an eighth. So there is my. Gonna so be there's my a way you lay, there's a way you lay it out lay out a larger pattern. Yeah, that's the way I do it. That you know that that paper that I showed, um, that graph paper really is uh, makes it nice, makes it uh, fairly simple. And again, if you've got a if you've got a pattern that is all four quarters are the same, then you just fold it into fours, cut your shape, and boom, unfold it, and then do this on a piece of MDF cut it out but we'll we'll get to this uh, cut out we'll move on to the bandsaw we'll have to flip to see who's uh, gonna use the bandsaw it's just a matter of who we're gonna flip but anyway we'll we'll, we'll figure it out uh, we'll see you in uh, just a minute bye okay guys here we are we are in our little uh, what we call our cave you can see it's kind of a it's a it's a, it's a um, container. A container, a yeah. shipping container. This is where we keep a lot of our extra equipment and stuff. Yeah, it's 40 foot long, it's 8 foot by 8 foot. Yeah. Uh, weatherproof. Uh, it does get a little warm in the summertime, but. Uh, we like warm, so. Yeah, we like that, warm. That works we, out. We don't for spend us. much time out here anyway. Yeah. Most of our time is in, the, in our other shop where our, most of our work is done. This is, this is where we keep a lot of our equipment. We keep our bandsaw here. I've got the jigsaw, and I've got the hawk jigsaw, which you'll see a little bit later. Scroll saw. Oh, yeah. Scroll saw. Yeah. And uh, I met scroll saw. And I when I get when I get this board close to what I want it, 
And then I'll get the scroll saw hooked up and I'll do some final touches on it with the scroll saw. So. Okay, so okay. let's fire it up, let's get it going. Here we go. You end up with skin knees? Is that what you're saying? What? You end up with skin knees? No. Like riding a bicycle? It's just, it's just like riding a bicycle once you do it. But you never forget how to do it. But sometimes when you get back on it, it takes a little bit to, to get going again. So it just uh, I just throw it on the floor. That works. Uh, didn't get quite on the line here, so I'll go back and put this fish and not like the router. And off of the line a little bit, I can just go back. Now, one funny thing is I get close to the line on here, as long as I don't get past the line, you can always come in with the sander to sand this off. And so I'm, I'm going to leave this ground part down there, I'm going to leave that to uh, to do with the scrolls on. And there have been times, guys, where I did patterns like this. Um, I'm going to move this off a bit. That's fine. You're just going to follow me with the camera. Yeah, I'll follow you. Um, there's been times where I've done this kind of thing actually with the upcut spiral bit and just roughed it out with the, um, with the router. So that's another way to go if you don't have a bandsaw. Yeah, if you got a bandsaw, I just in the long run it makes it a little bit so good easier. I should have a little bit more room here than what I've got. I'll just have to, I'll have to move this saw around a little bit. We may, we may have to set up another, another setup so I can get this a little bit closer than what I'm getting now. Well, honestly, too, Dad, I was thinking as we're sitting here doing this, uh, if we give them an idea of what we're, what you're doing there, uh, it's not like we have to do the whole thing well, on camera. That's all right. We've, we've got a few minutes. As long as you can follow me with the camera. I can do that. All right. I'll get it done. It would be a lot easier if I had this saw out in the middle of a room. Where I wasn't restricted by the walls. Uh, Is that off track or something? No, uh -huh. Does that sound make me this off track or something? Yeah, the saw was a little bit off track. It'll be alright. If it, if it snaps, we'll know. Yeah. Well, 
I'm fairly, I'm fairly full from this now. I'm going to hold it up. Can you see that thing? Yeah. Okay, I'm fairly full from it. I'm going to get the other end. And all we're doing here, guys, is just roughing this out. We're going to sand it down. Yeah, once we get it close, that's all I'm doing is just roughing it out. Once we get it close, then we'll, uh, we'll sand it down. We've got a, we've got a spindle sander, and we've got hand sanding equipment. So once I get this close and I finish up the... And we've got the radius to be stuck with the uh yeah, I'll stop that now and get that uh, all right let's just get that back on track. Okay, I reset that blade. It popped off the wheel. I reset it. Hopefully it'll be alright. If it popped off again. We're going to shut the can off, just like we did this time. We'll just try to keep everything on. Things shine like this is sometimes a little... It's uh, a little difficult to do, but... It's not hard. A small bandsaw like this is really a handy thing to have. This is a jet bandsaw. I think I paid about oh, three, four hundred dollars for or something like that. It wasn't really expensive, but it's nice to have it if you're going to do big stuff. So you can see what I did there. Hang on. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Nice thing about this. With a banjo like this, if, uh, if you stay away from your line a little bit, knowing that you can always come back and cut a little bit more off, but, uh, it makes it pretty nice. And when you come down the, come down where the cut is, it'd be nice if I had a nice bright light on this blade, which I don't have. But, nice as I did, but I don't try to make real tight inside cuts with this. Simply because it's uh, the blade is about a three-inch blade. Now if I had a quarter-inch blade in there, a quarter-inch skip to the blade, I could make a little uh, a little sharper cut. But you can see what I did, I came down there. I'm gonna come at it now from another angle. And I'm just going to get close up here. What you see me do here is I'm just getting, I'm getting it close to the line without, uh, without actually trying to make a, a finished cut with the bands off. I'll go in with the scrolls off and make a finished cut. So all I did was just left that little bit. I can go back and take that out just a, a section at a time. It's easy to do just take a couple of cuts. Then you take it out like that. So you just leave you a little bit to either clean up with the scroll saw or with the sander. Either way. Or a router. Or a router, yeah, you can do it with a router. Most of you guys are pretty good with a router.
together, man, so it would be nice to have a, a light directly on your blade, which I don't have here. I do have on my on my curl saw. So if I had a light directly on the blade, I might get it a little bit closer, but I'm getting reasonably close. And this is not this is not rocket science. All we're doing is just getting it close. So once we get it once we get it roughed out, then uh, then we use the sanding equipment and the scroll saw and uh, take it down to a little closer finish dimension. But the nice thing about a big sign like this is even if it's an eighth of an inch off, uh, it really doesn't matter. Nobody would ever know because we're going to use this as a pattern to cut a board to make the big sign with it. It's a little light away from here, but I get pretty close. So this is going to be real easy to stand up. We'll stand right down to the right down to the finish line. Yeah. 
which I can't do here. Then when I'm backing out, as long as you can't, you know, pull that blade off of the wheel. I'm 
feeling, sir? I am. I got you. Outside corner, of course, no need to on the dish tender. And, uh, okay. that, it's, not, it's not perfect, but we got it roughed out. That's what we wanted to do with the bandsaw. Just roughed okay. out. So, what we'll do is we'll shut the camera off now and get set up, do a little bit with a scroll saw, then we'll shut the camera off again and come back and show me how we finish sand this and get it ready. Alright. Alright, we're ready. Right. We're filming. Let's go. All right. So we got the scroll saw going. Yeah, we got the scroll saw going. Now I've got a light here, and I've got an oval blade in this scroll saw, so I don't have to necessarily turn. An oval blade? Yeah. Okay. It's an oval blade. It's a round blade, so I don't have to turn the piece. I can just cut in almost any direction. Are you on that blade? I'm getting there. I'm on it. Okay. Now, as you can see. I'm moving the piece slightly, but since the blade is a, is a spiral blade, I can cut without turning the without turning the piece a lot. I can make a pretty precision cut. You still on it? Yeah. Strictly an amateur for the scroll saw. I had this one for a while, but I am going to use it once in a great while for making special patterns. Yeah, there's uh, some of our guys are absolute. Oh yeah, some of them are just, just real, expert, real, expert with real this thing. Now, I left out a little bit rough down in there, but that's okay because it'll clean up. Now this point out here, I'm going to do this, get it down a little closer, just to show what we can do with this, with this stone saw blade. But to this, this should be really easy to surround this with a, with a disc channel. So I'm just doing this just to show you what you can do with the stone saw and a little bit of weight. Sure. You guys don't have a scroll saw. 
thing about getting one, but when I thought about getting one, I have to have some extra money. So I looked it down and there's, there's one that's called the Excalibur. It's supposed to be a good, good one, great one, actually, because the, the head tilt uh, on this one, if I wanted to cut something in an angle, I would have to fill the table. And this, uh, this scroll saw cost me a couple of thousand bucks. I'm not at all sure I've got my money to out of it, but I've had a lot of fun playing with it. And as you can see, in this cut I just made, you can get you know, if you're careful, you can make some pretty neat looking stuff. So that, I, that is, I believe, son, is about all I will do with the scroll saw. Everything else is going to be sanding. Yeah. Uh, and it's just a matter of getting it all trimmed up and getting it ready to, to use it as a pattern. All right, we'll, uh, we'll shut the camera off now and set up with the sander. All right. Here, we'll see you, be, see you back in a few minutes, guys. Okay, we are back. Now we're back in the studio. We brought the little spindle sander out here. So I'm going to finish this thing off. Um, I've done the, the corners here, like Dad was talking about, doing it with the disc sander. I went ahead and did that already off camera, but I'm going to put on the screen here right about now, uh, put what video you can go back and look at and see how I use the disc sander to uh, sand down these corners like I do on, uh, on my rectangle boards. So that's pretty much done. That, the corners like that and again you can re I'll give you some video to go back and review on that but now we're just going to get these inside edges these look pretty good that did a pretty good job I touched that up a little bit but I'm going to touch up a little bit more with this spindle sand <laughs> Go ahead and switch that spindle out. I think I've got 
That three-quarter inch spindle gets used a lot. Yeah, we use that a lot. So I'm just going to swap the spindles out here real quick. And I'm going to, I think I'll try that one. Oops, I need, well, yeah, there's one disc for that one. Looks like about that one there. Yeah, this little spindle sander is pretty cool. It's a pretty neat tool. We don't use it a lot, but uh, when you need it, it's a pretty neat little tool. Yeah, I can take off quite a bit more on that. One. shape it however you want. The main idea is to give it is to give the idea that this is a ribbon. It doesn't have to be a precision. If you happen to have a, a machinist background like some of you do, you may want it more precision than this, but honestly it's it's plenty good enough for me. So what we would do with this now, uh, I would go over it again just to make sure it's exactly what I want. Maybe hand sand it a little bit. Just make sure there's no little bobbles or, or little uh, uh, little rough stuff from the uh, from the bandsaw or the scroll saw. Uh, and then I'll, uh, I'll drill it with uh, with for screws and countersink, and then we'll uh, we we would cut cut our board out of it. We'll be doing that on a different video. This video is really about pattern making. That's all we're doing on this one is pattern making. But you've seen a lot uh, a lot in there. We're going long already, so. Um, that's going to about do it for this video, guys. Um, so, thanks for joining us. Um, 
we will see you uh, tomorrow on Coffee and Questions. And uh, by the way, the LTS, the next LTS is going to be um, November 14th, Saturday, November 14th. So we'll be talking about that a lot, a lot but in the next week or two. So what we're looking for you from you guys is uh, give us some ideas of things that you want to see. So over the next five, six, seven days, um, we, we want input from you. Tell us what you'd like us to do it on. We'll take all that into, into consideration, then figure out what we're going to do. And then a week prior, about a week from now, we'll tell you what the, what the subject is going to be about so you guys can kind of prepare for it. You'll know whether it's something you want to see. You, and you can prepare some questions so that when we do the questions and answer at the end, you can be all ready for it. Make sense, Dad? That makes sense to me, son. All right. Okay, so everybody, um, enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you tomorrow morning on Coffee and Questions. Bye-bye.